So following on from my shooting lesson with uh, Ash at Varmint Shooters UK, I thought I'd uh, get down the range and get actually see where I'm hitting on paper. Because it's all very well with gongs, um, but gongs, and gongs are great actually, I have to say, because it gives you a nice sort of audio feedback, you're not getting kind of too hung up on getting the perfect group, you're just concentrating on a piece of metal that's the kill zone that you're trying to hit, and just going from there and then moving on out. It's a brilliant way to shoot, but I thought, you know, now I'm kind of more on task in terms of uh, getting the way I'm holding the rifle right and all the rest of it and see what difference it's made to my grouping. So I went down the range and what follows is what happened. So I thought I'd start off with the 2-2, uh, my Browning T-Bolt, as you can see. And it was a great day actually, I had the whole range to myself. So, well, I say that, there was another guy who did turn up, but luckily he didn't go on the same range as me. So, yeah, it's one of the advantages with my club, really, where as long as I go down about tea time, most days I do pretty much have the whole place to myself, which, uh, which is nice. Although it's a double-edged sword, because, of course, you need to then put all the flags away and all that sort of thing. But as you can see, like I said, I'm here on the tea bowl, with the tea bowl, and I've actually got the bipod out rather than going on the bench, because weirdly with the bench I found that if the legs were retracted it was sort of too low and if they were fully out it was too high, which is yeah, a bit annoying really so I went in the prone position and I was expecting it to like be amazing and I'd be like shooting through the same hole and all the rest of it, but the trouble is is the way I'm lay like that, I'm actually sort of shooting on a slight angle almost upwards to get towards the, you know, the main target, and it's weird. It's it's an unusual feeling, to be honest. And I don't know if that's why it affected my shooting, because one of the the big factors I found, which I found when I was um, shooting with um, Ash at uh, Varmint Shooters UK, was it's all about consistent consistency, getting the rifle mounted exactly the same every time. That's like one of the reasons, for instance, it's good to put your hand under the stock so you always have the stock in your shoulder at the same time. But if you're sort of fighting against it and angling it upwards, it's a bit weird. Because ideally, I suppose with the bipod, you'd be laying on a hill shooting downwards, not at the bottom of a hill shooting upwards, if you see what I mean. But either way, you know, it's it's grouping all right. It's not too bad. Um, but as you can see, I am just kind of blazing away at this point. But regardless, I mean, that centre target, if you look at the ring around that red dot, that's about an inch, I think. So obviously the scope's slightly off. If it's not, then it's just my shooting from the way I'm pulling it. But whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it the same every time. And yeah, I mean, yeah. That would be a dead rabbit if, if push came to shove. Speaking of which, um, it's something I want to do a video about uh, another time. But a, a guy who was down at the club who I was chatting to is actually a Section 5 dealer. And um, he was actually shooting a CZ-75 uh, 9mm pistol on the other range. And so I went down to see him just before I went home. Um, just to say, oh, you know, make sure you, you know, I'm going. So, you know, you'll have to put the flags up. And he didn't let me have a go with it because he's not really allowed to. Um, we've got the Tika T3X coming up now. Um, but he let me have a look at it and sort of salivate over it, basically. But it's really interesting what he was telling me because... As it turns out, a Section 7.3 license isn't that difficult. In fact, um, he said to me, I mean, it's obviously it's an advantage for me, but he did say that if um, I buy a handgun off him and he's got, for instance, a, uh, a, a World War II era Luger with a four inch barrel, that's about a thousand pounds. And he actually also had a Luger artillery, which is a really long barrel. Um, that's a lot more collectible, but that was about £2,000. Um, but he also got various revolvers and, and all that sort of thing. But he said if I bought one off him, um, there's a club that he attends in Wensbury, um, which is about 40 miles from me, something like that. And um, you have to keep the gun there, but um, you know, he, he, he said he doesn't need his slot anymore, so he could give me a slot. So it's something I'm kind of considering, um, but obviously... You know, it's a bit of a pain, you have to then obviously pay fees to keep your gun there, so it's a bit of a hassle, but, you know, it's quite interesting. And anyway, it turns out he lives near my mum, and um, hopefully I'll go up and see him at some point, and he can show me what he's got. 
So keep your eyes out for that. Anyway, I'm digressing massively here. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm shooting the, two, um, the 243, my um, uh, TKT 3X. And it was shooting pretty well. I mean, I was shooting it actually, as you can see, probably better than I was with the 22. But I think part of that psychological, I'm probably, I say that just as I pull a flyer there. Um, part of that psychological though, I think, because, you know, when you're, especially when you're loading one shot at a time, and obviously it's uh, a lot more drama with the, with the 243, you're sort of probably taking a bit more care over each shot. But it's interesting to see where I was actually hitting, because obviously shooting with Ash, it was really good and everything. But obviously I was just shooting at a gong, and I'm just seeing where I'm hitting, basically, as we're doing it like this. I actually can see where I was hitting on paper, and overall, you know, it's it's not. There are a couple of shots there, that, like that one, <laughs> that have sort of pulled a little bit, but pretty much that's that's all right. That's all right. I didn't adjust the scope on on, on the rifle for this on this occasion. Um, I might do when I'm next up because it does look like I am pulling it a little bit to the right, but yeah, you know, whatever. I'll have to see, but. Uh, it's, it is amazing how quickly you can blaze through the rounds because I haven't counted them. I think it's about 12 shots, 11, 12 shots, I think, somehow on this, on somewhere on this clip. But um, yeah, you can certainly blaze away through them quite quickly. Going prone was handy because the muzzle sticking out like that, the wind coming across, did mean that I wasn't suffering quite so badly with the heat waves, um, which do block out your vision. But if any of you guys have got a recommendation, a really good quality sort of velcro covering for the silencer that can stop that problem with the heat waves that'd be really useful you don't really see them in the uk that much apart from sort of ugly neoprene things but if you do see something nice yeah let me know where i can get one so as you can see i was it wasn't bad it wasn't brilliant either i think there's an element of the i was uh, shooting off the bipod which is such a stable platform but because of the way I was sitting, I was almost slightly shooting up, which felt a bit unnatural. So I don't know if that affected my shooting somewhat. Um, but I was really kind of plinking, as you saw. I mean, with the 2-2, I was just firing away, to be honest. But still, you know, an acceptable group. With the 243, it was a um, yeah, that was a pretty good group. I mean, that was probably half an inch if you if you discount those those bottom two shots and obviously that flyer to the right, which are those three shots. But if you take those out, the rest of them were all. Yeah, like half inch group really. But anyway, Ash, if you're watching, if you can see anything that I'm like obviously doing wrong, because you can see both those groups are a little bit off. Um, with the two four three, I'm shooting a little bit to the right. With the two two, I'm shooting a little bit to the left. I don't know if that's something I'm doing or if I just need to adjust the scope for it now. So either way, let me know what you think. And for the rest of you, hope you enjoyed that. Keep watching. <laughs>